Hey guys, I've got a real quick video for you guys today since I'm in South Africa and if you guys happen to be visiting this beautiful country I've got a few suggestions of what snacks to get while you guys are here so I'm gonna go quickly into the grocery store and show you guys what are you buying Now we're back from the shopping trip and I'm with my good friend here, Rico. We go way back. Like how long have I known you now? Yo. Hey, what's up guys? Um I think I've been with you I know you since like maybe 10 years. 10 More years, yeah. Maybe 10, 10 years. years, yeah. We go way back. So it was good to come back and see him in person. And I bought a lot of snacks here and I would probably go list the top five. Maybe no do a, do a couple honorable mentions. No problem. And Go ahead. definitely the top five. I think it's my personal favorite, and I think you'll enjoy it too. So we've got three snacks here, and I think it's worth a mention to you guys. I think in South Africa, probably like the whole of Southern Africa, we do a lot of like dried fruits, and yeah. and also like a lot of nuts. And this is like a big part of our like diet snacking habits, uh, especially mangoes. Dried mango is one of my favorite. And if you want. You know something sweet, uh, chocolatey. I think a lunch bar. Like, lunch bar. Yeah, I think it's been around forever. It's been when so you... long. It's been very long. It's compared to like bar ones and all the other all the other chocolate bars. Yeah. But I think lunch bar. Yeah, you can't go wrong with it. It's like one of the OG chocolate bars we have here. OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are called like cable candies. <laughs> so this is like what it looks like. It's got a like a jelly gummy sweet texture on the outside, and if you break it in the middle. You can see it's got it's got fillings on the inside. Mm. Mm. I think uh, when we were in like primary school, they used to sell these in the in the tuck shops. They used to sell this one rand, so it's equivalent to how much? Ten cents. Ten <laughs> cents. <laughs> yeah, it was very cheap. No, these are absolutely delicious. You can mm. find them in it was like licorice outside, and like mm. the sweet in the fillings inside. on the inside. Yeah, mm, I think yeah. the insides are absolutely delicious. Mm. So now we got the honorable mention snacks out of the way. Let's start on number five. What do we have around our necks on our scarves? <laughs> <laughs> They're actually chips. Because we package our little chips in strips like this. And then they normally hang on display shelves on in the stores. And you just cut them. And normally kids, you know, pack a little, a small packet of chips in their lunch bag. And mm. just, you know, have a snack during their lunch break or so. What we have here is knickknacks. Uh, for those who don't live in South Africa, probably won't know this, but this is like our Cheetos. It looks exactly like Cheetos. Still love it. Since yeah, I still love kid, it. I still eat it almost every day. Almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> and also here we have Samba chips, mm -hmm. one of the the oldest brands in in South Africa that you can get. And also knickknacks is made by Samba. This is oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So the next item on the list, our number four, we have fizzes. So you guys can see here, it's like packaged in like such weird colored. This is a strawberry flavored. We we have like green cream soda flavored, apple flavors. I think we're gonna we're gonna break one because this thing is like super long. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how so, we do it. Yeah, this is how we do it. And <sighs> yeah, just throw it in your mouth. Honestly, it, it you, you cannot imagine how fuzzy this thing is in your mouth and it disappears into nothing. So for our third item, we actually need something complementary to the rust we have here. These Omar's rusks are I think a staple in our diet, especially when it comes to like our tea culture, drinking break, like having breakfast, it's something that 
every South African knows like how to eat this. And there's a special technique to how to eat it. Actually, let me, before I go into that, let me show you what is inside. Now don't confuse this as a bag of rocks. <laughs> these, these are not rocks that you pick up on the street, <laughs> even though they might look like one. Do you know the history behind rust? Like how do you, how do you came, came to eat, like start, invented this? I might live in this country for a very long time, but till today I still don't know how rust came from. Oh, I know that <laughs> it's from flowers, that's all. <laughs> yeah, actually I did a little bit of research on these today and they are double baked bread. And because I think they came to popularize in the 1600s, so a long history, like 400 years ago. Wow. And because the people in Karoo, which is a semi-desert area in South Africa, they had to travel. And the only way to preserve food is to make it into like a super dried, text, a super dried, mm. like a condensed form of it. They carry these around and I'll show you guys in a minute. Just listen to the sound of this. Can you guys hear this? This is how hard this is and you don't eat this dry. There's a technique to do this and I believe I judge you. I judge people on how they dunk their rust on their tea or coffee because you cannot dunk it for, for, for like leave it in there for too long and you cannot just go that is not enough for rust because they are so hard you actually need to leave it in there for a little bit and chat to your friends you know like Rick over here and this is like a tea time snack with your, with your friends uh, I'll probably do this in the morning though, you know. In the morning, when, yeah. When morning, you know, when you always want to catch up with the friend in the morning on the Monday morning, you know. Yeah, maybe also like a Sunday weekend. brunch too. Yeah, yeah, like that. And then, hey, I think you leave it for too long. Eh? Did I? Oh, yeah. you, you know, when you leave it for too long, it, the bread the bread will actually break off and fall into the teeth. Yeah, exactly. And then that, that's when you know it's not good anymore. Okay, so should we give it a try? Uh, yeah. It? It's cheers on the on the rest. Cheers. Cheers. So when you bite into it, it becomes nice and soft. Soaked up with the, with the flavor of the tea and the milk in mine. Mm. And don't forget to take the sip of your drink as well, off the yeah, benefits. That's true, that's true. So for our next snack, we're going back to chocolate. I would say this, this is like a, like a lost brother of M&M's or because, Smarties or Smarties yeah. yeah right because they are they are just chocolates in a circular shape and if you bite into it you'll have a a nice surprise of a jelly bean inside yeah, yeah. jelly beans yeah and for our last snack and I think it is as our most fa famous snack in South Africa, which we absolutely uh, love and we all love it. Yeah, eat it on a weekly basis. And I have Botong and dried sausages over here. Drovos. 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 Yeah. There's also a history behind this. Do you know? Do you know how how they came to making Botong? <laughs> I'm sorry. I told you this before. <laughs> yes, I might live here for a long time. Or oh, I know that they came from a cow or from a, <laughs> from, from, a, a from an animal. Or a, a, a buck or a cow, yeah. yeah. An animal, yeah. Yeah, actually, I was in the same place with you like a couple of minutes ago until I had to do some research. It actually has very similar history to the, to the rusk we had earlier on. Um, people in Karoo in the 1600s, uh, because they were travelers and they had to. Uh, preserve their meat and their mm -hmm. food sources for a long period of time, especially during winter. So they came to a curing method, uh, which is now they make raw meat into biltong. And biltong is very similar to uh, what is known in America called beef jerky. But it is also very, very different because it is, it doesn't go under any cooking process. It doesn't. It yeah. doesn't go under any Not cooking ever. process. Mm. And the season, the season, the seasoning we use is, we dunk it in vinegar, we soak it in vinegar, a lot of coarse sea salt, black pepper, and coriander and cloves. Yeah, we, mm, we grind those cool. into powders, and that is it. And they because, leave it, and then they leave it under the sun, and they just let it dry. Yeah, under the sun or dehydration box nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. believe they would do. <laughs> they would, they would leave it under the sun <laughs> in the sixteen hundreds. Yeah, yeah, they would. Yeah. And let's crack these things open. Yeah, let's show you guys it. what is inside. 
Oh, you can get the smell of the meat mm -hmm. as soon as you open it, eh? There you go. Just show the camera how it is. So these are called botons, these are called drobos. Mm. And if you snap it, you can see this actual natural sausage casing and it looks just like sausages that's been dehydrated. And they are actually just sausages that's been dehydrated with but the most important thing, what makes a botong botong is the seasoning. It's, it is. Yeah. yeah. And it's the raw beef, the mm. raw raw meat that goes into mm. preparing the, the final product. Here's is the best combo to eat. A, a bit of fat at the top and a little bit of the, yeah. the hard meat at the bottom. The fat is the best. Yeah. It is, uh, it is it's the best. So what gives it flavor? Yeah. yeah. Should we give All it right, a try? Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Wow. This is like signature South African snacks. Signature. Yeah. But I think the flavor of this, like what would you say, like what was the first thing that hits you with, with Bolton? I think it's the saltiness. Eh? It's the saltiness. It I is a very saltiness. high sodium, sodium mm, food, yeah. Food, yeah. And also it's very, very like irony, like metallic almost because of it, the meat is, it's just dehydrated so that the blood, the iron content in there, it's almost concentrated. But it, it's absolutely, it's got a very unique uh, flavor profile and if you guys happen to be in South Africa or if you can get it in your country which I, I surprise it will be very surprising but I'm sure Amazon has everything nowadays so you can you can get it off you can go to get it off Amazon so that concludes the video I'm glad to have Rico here it's to, my honor to spread a little bit of the South African culture thank you to my viewers out there and thank you guys for watching and if you guys do happen to come to South Africa, make sure to try some of these snacks and I promise you, you guys will not be disappointed. And thank you again for watching. Hope you guys have a good one. Cheers.